Well, I suppose I'd have to get down to the valves. So, let's uh, loosen all these bolts up. And then hopefully, uh, I need to get a wrench for that one and I really hope I don't have to remove this bar again. So what I'm probably going to end up doing is I'm going to, yeah, that's kind of scary. Okay. Uh, I still need a wrench for that one. What I'm going to do is inspect the valves. There's probably carbon buildup on them or something. And I'm going to probably remove them and then grind them back down. And then put them back in. And hopefully that's going to stop the, in the leak. So we'll see what happens. You don't really ever want to use an open end of a wrench to get a bolt off because you can end up stripping the head, but it wasn't going to fit. And uh, I think I'm screwed anyways because I need to remove this bar and I really don't want to do that again. Oh no, just for this one bolt, come on. Oh, maybe I can move it without bending it. No. The best thing is going to be to remove it. don't want to remove this bar again. Ow. Come on, I'm so close. Yes. There we go. Alright, I got it. And I'll take my wrench as well. I can remove these vice grips as well. Won't be needing those anytime soon. Oh, and that bolt right there. There's always one I forget. Hopefully it's half inch. It's not. That's my luck. on the sprocket there, or chain or gear, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Well, there's the head, and there are the valves. That's a tiny piston. <laughs> So 
So here's what an inside of an engine looks like. I don't actually know if I've ever shown an inside of the, an engine. Piston moves up and down, the valves open and close. And yeah, that's the entire operation. And I see scoring. Well, maybe that's not bad. I see scoring all along there. Hmm. I think it can still run. But my main concern isn't the piston, it's this valve right here. This is the intake valve, and it's not sitting properly. It's not sealing, so... In order to get the valve off, I need to remove a cover that's behind, but down there, which involves removing the carburetor and the gas tank, which is no problem because the gas tank needs to come off anyways. I'll just leave it right there. Well, that screw is stuck. Let me go grab something. I love these uh, impact hammers. I don't know if that did anything. I said I love these impact hammers because they work. That still didn't do anything. Well, I could use heat. <laughs> Heat up the screw with gasoline around it, right? That's a good idea. Oh, right. Don't I need a bigger hammer? I also got a shorter head for it. I hope this... Yeah, you see, I can't use a shorter head. Because I, I can't see what I'm doing. I need a flashlight. Oh, well, you know what? Maybe... Maybe. I don't think that's doing anything. Oh, okay. You okay? I'm okay. Huh, well, don't fall like that, please. Just... I wasn't recording. I got it. I don't know what I was doing wrong the first time, but... I don't know how to use simple tools. That's the problem. Anyways, I love that impact hammer. future reference the three smaller screws the flat head goes over here with the clamp that goes over this uh, breather and the two Phillips heads go right there the bigger flat head goes right there okay future reference Alexander Look at this. My GoPro battery is almost about to die as well. It's at 4%. <laughs> I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that, but right there, you see that spring that's almost right in the center of the screen? Well, that's connected to the gas tank. So in order to remove the gas tank, you need to remove move all of that. Why would you do that to me? Thank you. 
here's the carburetor. I finally got it off of the machine. It was a battle. And the fuel tank can now come off. I removed all those linkages along with the spring butt down there and the wire that, uh, that was used to turn off the machine. So it's very corroded. So I'm gonna try to clean this up, soak it in an ultrasonic cleaner, see if I can't get gaskets for it, and uh, see what I can do. Where I normally take carburetors apart, that's a mess right now. So this will have to do. So this, I believe, is a type of fuel pump. I think there are just diaphragms in here. And uh, so there might be a spring as well. And all these screws look the same, so I don't think I have to worry about keeping track of which one went where. And the hardest part I'm going to have with this is uh, cleaning it in an ultrasonic cleaner. Because mine is so small that, well, I, well it's not going to fit this. But maybe I'll put it in twice. I'll put this bottom part in and then the body in separately. Or maybe I'll just take a look on Briggs and Stratton and see if they make uh, brand new carburetors. Although seeing that this is from uh, 1964-65, one or the other, it's not going to be easy. I really need to figure out how to get this open. I got this little brass hammer from uh, Harbor Freight. It's a nice little thing, but it just, uh, you know, it constantly have to make sure that the heads are screwed on tightly. Yeah, that's just stuck on there. There we go. I got that now. Yeah, look at that. All in there. It's all corroded. And here's the diaphragm. And there's a tiny spring. Okay. So the spring comes in two pieces. This top piece and the spring itself, that just sits down in there. And then the diaphragm goes right on top of it. And the cap goes on. Obviously, I'm going to be replacing whatever I can. And I'm just going to wire brush all this before I put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. It's just a soft uh, brass brush. So it's not doing any damage. Not that you can damage this carburetor. It's damaged enough. This, I believe, is for the uh, full throttle jet. And it has a washer. And that's also stuck in there, so I'm going to screw it back in. And try to remove the jet first. And that's not going to work. So I'm going to do this. Yep, that's stuck on there. I need a bigger screwdriver. Yeah, that's stuck on there. Jeez. Nope. Okay. So that doesn't want to come off. Yeah, right, look at what I did. All that right there. Okay. And there's another jet inside of this. Let's see if the big screwdriver fits. 
without those metal shavings. There we go. At least this works. Oh, and I just dropped it. Oh, and I just lost it. I found it. Hey, shockingly, that little hole that's in there is uh, clean. It's clear. So that's good. That's a good start. And really, I'm just going to wire brush the rest of this. And uh, soak it in the ultrasonic cleaner, and then I need to remove those valves as well. It's one thing after the next on this machine. So here's the valve cover that I need to remove to get to the... Um, I don't know what you call it. The valve caps. I think that's what you call them, the valve caps. And this tube is just a breather that can just come off. But the main problem is this plate right here. This plate is blocking this cover from coming off. And this plate is connected to this back plate. And this back plate has, well, all of that stuff on it. So, I'm not going to be removing that, but I'm just going to gently bend it out of the way. If I can't, I can't even do that one-handed. That's, that's really strong, actually. So, I was unable to bend that piece of metal because, well, it's uh, really tough. And I'm not taking all those pulleys off just to remove that back cover, or plate, rather. So, I just have a wrench... And I'm just slowly going back and forth, and, well, I guess that's how I'm putting it back on as well, unfortunately. But I got it. So, don't know how well you're able to see it, and with the flashlight, you probably, well, maybe a little. So there are the valve springs, that's what they're called. Got, that's the intake, and that's the exhaust. Really, I only want to do the intake, but I'm going to do the exhaust as well, because, well, if the intake's bad, the exhaust is also probably going to be bad. I'm going to get safety glasses for this, because, well, it's small parts might go flying. All you do is you just have to figure, find out wherever the notch is to remove it. And then, well, there you go. And that was very simple, and there's the valve. So this is what the valve looks like when it's sitting in there. Right, and then the valve has a cap on it. It has a groove that it sits in right there. And that little hole right there, that's how you unlock it. So you take, well, in this case I used a flathead screwdriver. And you push it up and you move it so that it unlocks itself. And that's how you get the valves out. And all across the valve face, I think that's what it's called. I don't know 100%. See that little light silver right in the middle? Camera's probably not going to focus on it. But that little light silver is where the valve seals. And going around it, got to make sure it has a good seal. And on this valve, it almost looks like the seal is thinner right there than, say, right there. And I think you can even see that on camera. So that's just, that's probably where it, the leak was coming from. And I'm also going to remove the exhaust valve. Oh, I keep on hitting the camera, which is that one right there. Oh, I've come in, cat. Come on in. Come on. I'm over here. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. She was sitting outside waiting for me. Anyways. 
Well, now I got my little helper. So that's good. And the exhaust valve, it's just the same thing. You just need to lift it up and move it some way. This one's proving a lot more difficult. Really, you should get the proper valve stem removers. Um, nope. Valve uh, spring compressors. That's what they're called. But I don't have those. And I'm not about to go out and buy them. There we go. I got it. I think I got it. Yep. Perfect. Here's the exhaust valve. Cat. And then, here's the valve spring. Fantastic. I call this toolbox my, uh, kind of my engine overhaul toolbox. Because really it has everything, almost everything you need to do an engine overhaul. You got measuring stuff down there, a gasket maker, uh, I'm forgetting the name, a honer for the cylinder. Uh, valves, more valves, and this is the stuff that we need. I think this one, and this valve grinding compound. Alright, so, here are the two valves. The bigger one is the intake, and the smaller one is the exhaust. So, to grind these down, you kind of want to clean them off, get all the oil off of them. And make sure that they stick. This is just a valve grinding tool, I guess. All you're gonna do is just that, pretty much, with the valve on it. So, you take a little bit of valve grinding paste, put it around the surface, around where the valve is supposed to seal. And then its job is to, well, pretty much grind a new surface, any carbon that's around it, it's gonna, you know, clean the carbon up. So you just put the grinding paste on it, let the valve fall back down as you get it all over your fingers. That, that step's important, get it all over your fingers as well. And then you just take the suction cup, make sure it's sitting, and then Go back and forth. And you hear how when I first start, it's kind. Of, it sounds very gritty, and then as I go, it kind of smooths out. That's what you want. And that's another reason why you don't want oil on the, on the valve. Because if you get oil on it, then this suction cup is no good. You want to try to get it, I don't know, centered a little bit. I might have a different size. Let me try a different size. See, the only problem with this one... Well, maybe that one will work. 
Yeah, okay, that one's too big. Well, you get the gist of it. It's just go back and forth with this. And then do the same thing for the exhaust valve. And then that's how you clean the surface of the valve. And once you think you're good, after doing that a couple times, remove the paste and take a look at it. See what you have. I'm going to clean this up with carb cleaner to make sure I get all the paste off of it. But yeah, that's basically how you how you do it. You can even see, don't know if you can see, but it looks a lot better than it did before. So, I'm going to say the intake valve is done and I'm going to start on the exhaust valve. And then it's just the same process over and over and over. So now look at how good this looks. So that's the intake valve, this is the exhaust valve, that silver ring in the middle, and same thing where they seal, it also looks really good. So that's, that looks, I'm very happy with that. I also uh, took a wire wheel and got all the carbon build up off of this valve, so that's good because it's on the exhaust side, it has uh, the most carbon on it. So now here's the difficult part, and this is going to determine whether I stop at Harbor Freight tomorrow to pick up a valve spring compressor. I'm going to try to reinstall the valve, and this light is in my way, but then I want you to see, so I need it on. There. So, and this light is dead now. Okay, let me go grab a better one. Well, I guess that kind of works. That doesn't really work for me, though. Well, this light, that's the best it's going to be. Oh, well. Uh, let's see. Ah, we'll leave it just like that. So now, I need to find my screwdrivers. And try to get this back in. Okay, that's all right. Okay. Hmm. Yep, this is where I need the spring compressor. And I don't have one. And I don't think there's any mechanic place open right now. There we go, that's in. Okay, just need to do the other side now. 
which I should have started on that side because it's in the back. Well, at least it's on the other side of this spring. Well, let's line that up. Alright, that's now all lined up. And obviously you want to be very careful when you're using screwdrivers and not the proper tool. Because you don't want to break anything, nor do you want anything to fling out and uh, hit you. Because that, uh, that will never be good. Nope, I just dropped my screwdriver. Nope, that's not lined up. There we go. And I don't think I broke anything either. Okay. It's wonderful. Well, I'm not really good with valve uh, measurements and feeler gauges, but the intake valve feels like it's about 19 thousandths of an inch, and the exhaust valve feels like it's 18 thousandths of an inch. Are those good uh, clearances? I have no idea, actually. I tried to look for a manual, couldn't find one. I tried to look for specifications for this engine. All I got was nothing. So I'm, I'm gonna assume that those are okay. So there you go. I got the valves back in now. I don't want to do anything else until I order parts for it, because I want to order brand new gaskets. And, uh, yeah, that's probably it. And I'm also going to do some research into the valve adjustments and clearances. Because on these valves, well, I don't have a flashlight on me anymore, but you can't adjust them. Uh, the only way you can technically adjust them is to grind them, the, uh, the valve stem, to grind the valve stem down. And you can only do that going one way which is taking away, which is making the clearance bigger. And so if it's uh, too big of a clearance, too big of a gap, then you have to, I guess, replace the entire valve. So I don't really want to do that because I want to spend as little money as possible. But yeah, so I'm going to go order new gaskets. Hopefully I don't need a new carburetor. I'm going to look into that. I haven't cleaned the old one yet. But, I mean, it's just, I don't know, it's just a mess right now so that's that maybe i'll try to find a new one or a new old stock or one off of a good engine that runs that i don't need put onto this one i don't know i know the gas tank still needs to be cleaned because well it's all rusted in there but i have a good idea as to how i'm gonna fix that but that's for another another day same project another day but that's it so on to the next project which is probably gonna be this one